Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number five from the June 2022 International A Level at Excel Pure Mathematics P1 paper. This question here is about a curve with equation y equals ffx. We're told that f of x is a quadratic expression. So we can say f of x is equal to a, a times x squared plus b times x plus c. So it's got this type of form. Make that a bit neater. Okay. We're also told that the maximum turning point on C has coordinates negative 2 and 12. Okay, now we know a quadratic curve has one turning point. All right. So this is going to be a maximum. Therefore, it's going to have this shape like this. So maximum means it's a frowny face. So I know from this information, I know that the value of A must be negative. The value of A definitely is negative because um, it has a maximum turning point. And we know the coordinates of the turning point, so we know that the, the vertex of this curve is negative 2 and 12. So from this information, we know the coordinates of the vertex, and we know that it is a frowny face. It opens downwards. And then it says C cuts a negative x-axis at negative 5. That means one of the roots of this equation is negative x equals negative 5. x equals negative 5 is a root. Therefore, we know that it passes through this point. Okay, This is um, one of the x-intercepts. All right, so with this information, we can actually uh, find the equation of the curve, which we asked to find, find f of x, in two ways. One way, we could use the fact that we know the vertex and we know this point, and we'll be able to find the equation. And the other way is we can know that this is one of the roots, and as we know that this is the vertex, we can actually find the other root using symmetry. And once we know two roots and a point that the, 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 the curve passes through, we can then also find the equation of the curve um, that way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, show how to do this in both ways. And that will be like a check for me as well to see, um, you know, to make sure that I've done the question um, correctly. If I get the same answer in both ways, then I know I'm, I'm on the right tracks. So I'm going to basically just split this page into two two halves. I'll show you how to do it in one of the ways on this side and the other way on that side. Hopefully by the end, I'll have the same answer. So let me start off by um, using the vertex. I know that the vertex is negative two and 12. I know that's the vertex. Now we know that um, when we have a quadratic equation written in the form that it's when you complete the square, Okay, you can read from that directly the vertex. So we can do the reverse of that. We can actually write down the equation of the um, curve of the quadratic in completed the square form from the vertex. But there's something that we don't know, which is the coefficient of the x squared, which I'm going to call a. I know it's negative, but I don't know its value. But we're going to have x. This is the form where you complete the square a times x minus p squared plus q, where p, q is the, that, that is the coordinates of the vertex. Those are the coordinates of the vertex. So applying that to this vertex, I can say that um, y is equal to a times x, and I've got minus minus 2, which is plus 2 squared, and then plus 12. The, the vertex of this equation is negative 2, 12, as required. Now, we also know one other piece of information, that it passes through the point negative 5, 0. Now, if it passes through the point negative 5, 0, that means this point satisfies the equation. If this point satisfies the equation, when I substitute y as 0, and remember this is the x value, this is the y value, and x as negative 5, that will help me find um, the value of a. So I'm going to replace the x with a negative 5. So I have a times negative 5 plus 2 squared plus 12. See, the only thing we don't know is the a. So I can subtract 12 from both sides, and I can find what this is. This is going to be negative 5 plus 3, which is negative 3, all squared. So I've got negative 12 equals 9a. So a is equal to negative 12 over 9. Therefore, we can say a is equal to negative 4 over 3. So we, we did determine that a was definitely negative, and that's uh, you know confirmed by this. We've, so we know we've done something right here at least. So now I can work out the equation. I can say f of x, which is y, is equal to a, which is minus 4 over 3, 
times x plus 2 squared plus 12. Now, they didn't tell us what form to write the answer in. I'm sure if I left it like this, it would be fine. But to make it more complete, I'm going to, and to be able to compare it to my answer that I'm going to get from there, I'm going to expand this. So this is minus 4 over 3 times. If I square this bracket, I'll have x squared plus 4x. Multiply them together and double it. And then square that last term. I got 4. And then I got my plus 12. Now I can expand this part. So f of x is equal to negative 4 over 3x squared minus 16 over 3x minus 16 over 3 plus 12. So now I can combine these last two terms together. So I have f of x is equal to negative 4 over 3x squared minus 16 over 3x. Now this is minus 16 over 3 plus 36 over 3. 36 minus 16 is 20. So I'm left with f of x is equal to negative 4 over 3 x squared minus 16 over 3 x plus 20 over 3. So there's the answer. That's f of x written in this ax squared plus bx plus c form. And, um, you know, that's how we can use the vertex and the point that they're given for us to find the equation. As I mentioned, we can also use um, the fact that we know the roots. And um, basically, if I just make a little uh, uh, simple sketch here, just to, to illustrate, we know that it has a root at negative 5. And it has a vertex at negative 2. Okay, so the curve will go something like this. It has a frowny face, turns at negative 2, and it goes something like this. Okay, it's not a very good drawing. But I know that the line of symmetry of a quadratic will always pass through the vertex. That's a line of symmetry, which is x equals negative 2. So if that's a line of symmetry, then this distance is 3, and therefore this distance must also be 3. So if this is negative 2, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. So we can say that the roots of this particular equation are negative 5, 0, as they told us, and 1, 0. Now, if those are the roots of the equation, then I can say that y... Um, well, let's imagine we solved a quadratic equation. We ended up with these as our roots, x equals negative 5, and x equals 1. That's our answer for finding the roots. What would have been the step before we got x equals negative 5? Well, it would be an x plus 5 equals 0. And before x equals 1, well, it would be an x minus 1 equals 0. And what would have been the step before that? Well, we would have had two brackets, product of the two factors is equal to 0. And what would have been the step before that? Well, there could have been a common factor that we took out from these terms, which I'm going to call a, which we must do. That's possible. And what would have been the step before that? Well, before that, it would have been like in, in its form uh, that we then factorize. But let's leave it like this for now to make life easier. But before that, we would have started off with uh, y equals a times x plus 5 times x minus 1. Then we would have said, okay, to find where it hits the y, the x-axis, we make y equals 0. So that's, that would have been that step. So before that, we would have had this. And now we want to find what that a is. We know that this, this passes through the point negative 2, 12, as they told us here, all right? So that means the point negative 2, 12 will satisfy this equation. I can't use negative 5, 0 or 1, 0 because it will make this bracket 0 or make that bracket 0. The a will become just cancelled out. But I can use this point. I know this is the x value of the vertex. This is the y value. And it doesn't have to be the vertex. It could be any point on the line except for the roots. That will help us find what a is. So any point they give us on the line, apart from the roots, will help us find um, the value of a. So this point here, y is equal to 12, and x equals negative 2. So we have a times minus 2 plus 5, uh, so a times minus 2 plus 5 times minus 2 minus, th minus 1. Okay, so I've put the, uh, the x value in here and the y value in there. So let's see what we get for a. 12 is equal to a times... That's 3 times negative 3. So 12 equals negative 9a. So therefore, a is equal to 12 over negative 9. So a is equal to negative 4 over 3. And that's exactly 
what we got before for the value of a so let's now see if this gives us if everything else the same we have y equals a which is negative 4 over 3 times x plus 5 times x minus 1 now let's see if we end up with the same equation so we can say f of x is equal to negative 4 over 3 let's expand this bracket you have x squared minus x plus 5x which is plus 4x and 5 times minus 1 which is minus 5 okay so we let we left now left with f of x is equal to negative 4 over 3x squared negative 16 over 3x and plus 20 over 3 which is exactly the same as what we got here so um, as and you don't have to of course do it in both ways i've just showed you two two alternative ways of answering this question and um one of the reasons is so you've got you know different methods of doing it uh, the second reason is as a mark scheme has not been released for this paper yet uh, when i'm at the point when i'm doing this paper um that's a way of me checking to see that i've done the right thing if i've got the same answer from two different methods um you know obviously it seems like i've done the right thing so there's the answer to question number five part a I hope that was clear and um, I'm going to now go through part B in, in the next part of the question. Okay, there's actually, thinking about it, a third method we could use also, which uh, I personally don't prefer, but maybe some of you who are kind of like algebra freaks and like um, equations and simultaneous equations, maybe you might appreciate this method. So I'll also show you this third method and let's see if we get the same answer. So we have the curve C has equation Y equals F of X. This is third method. Given that F of X is quadratic, so that's where we know that Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C. The curve, the maximum turning point on C has a point negative 212 and it cuts a negative X axis at negative 50. So we can, from these two, um, determine a few more things. From minus 212 being the maximum turning point first of all it passes through this point so this point satisfies this equation so i can replace the y with 12 and the x with negative 2 and we end up with this equation 12 equals uh, sorry this is a not x sorry okay so you have 4a minus 2b plus c so that's like one equation that we formed from the fact it goes through negative 2, 12. And we also know that it goes to the point negative 5, 0. Okay, and that will give us the equation when that's y equals 0 and um, x equals negative 5. So you have a times negative 5 squared plus b times negative 5 plus c. That also satisfies this equation. Um, so you end up with 25a minus 5b plus c. So that's another equation. So we've got two equations uh, with three unknowns. We also know that negative 212 is a turning point. This is a, a turning point. So we know that when x equals negative 2, dy dx equals 0. So we can use uh, a bit of differentiation here. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember, dy dx tells us the gradient. And at the turning point of a curve, the gradient is equal to zero. Uh, tangent will be um, horizontal. So dy dx of this is going to be 2ax plus b. Okay, a is a constant, remember, so it's two. This so you multiply the coefficient by the power, take one from the power, and an x term loses the x. So you've got 2a, 2ax two plus b, and we know that that's when x equals negative two. Uh, we can say dy dx equals zero. So we can say zero equals 2a times negative 2 plus b so we're left with 0 equals minus 4a plus b so we can say b is equal to minus 4 or sorry b is equal to 4a b is equal to 4 times a okay so we have some equations here that we can uh, now i guess we can solve these equations so we have 12 equals 4a minus 2b plus c and we have um 0 equals 25a minus 5b plus c and we have b equals 4a so if i were to for example take this equation 1 and this equation 2 and this is equation 3 say if i was to subtract these two equations i'll have um, 12 minus 0 which is 12 4 minus 25 which is negative 21a 
minus 2 minus minus 5, which is plus 3b, and c minus c, which is 0. Now I have a and b, and I have this, and I can replace the b with 4a. So I have 12 equals minus 21a plus 3 times 4a. So I have 12 equals minus 21a plus 12a. And minus 21 plus 12 is minus 9. So 12 equals minus 9a. So a equals 12 over minus 9, which is negative 4 over 3. So that's uh, the same value of a we got in the in parts in the first two methods, so that looks promising. And we know that b is equal to 4a, so b is equal to 4a, uh, so that's equal to 4 times negative 4 over 3, so b is equal to negative 16 over 3. And then we can find what c is using any of these two. I think this might, the second one, this, this second equation might be more useful. So 0 equals 25 times a, so it's 25 times minus 4 over 3. Okay, minus 5 times b, which is 5 times minus 16 over 3, plus c. So we got 0 equals, that's minus 100 over 3, minus, that's going to be 5 times 16 is 80, that's going to be plus 80 over 3, minus times 1 is plus, plus c. So you got minus 20 over 3, so 0 equals minus 20 over 3 plus c, therefore c is equal to 20 over 3. So now we've got the values of the coefficients a, a, b, and c. So y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can say our equation is f of x equals negative 4 over 3x squared plus b. b is negative 16 over 3, so negative 16 over 3x plus c, which is plus 20 over 3. And again, we get exactly the same answer. I personally prefer um, the first or the second method, probably the first better. But all of those methods give us the same answer exactly, of course. So another confirmation that we've done the question correctly. Okay, so I'm going to actually end this video in part A um, because I'm going to save this video under the um, playlist for the paper where you'd find also parts B and C. Um, but I'll also save this particular part of this under the t title of quadratics the playlist of quadratics which you will find in this area here and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link so if you want to see part b and c you'll find it in the playlist which will appear over here at the end of the video um, thank you for watching and i'll see you soon